Glenn looked away with a smile on his face, and a bright figure appeared in the shot. Just as he was watching, Lori found the place. She learns that Glenn is going to look for medicine and asks him to help find a special item. At noon, Glenn and Maggie rode into town on horseback, their purpose being this pharmacy. The two of them split up to collect the medicines on the list. Glenn quietly finds what Lori needs, which turns out to be a pregnancy test. Maggie suddenly came up behind him, making him panic. He hurriedly hid this thing and then took a box on the ground by hand. But when he looked down, Glenn was a little embarrassed and blushed. Maggie seemed very open and asked him if he had a girlfriend. In front of her, Glenn immediately denied it, afraid that she misunderstood something. Seeing Glenn's panicked look, Maggie thought he was very cute and then started to take the initiative and kissed Glenn. From this pharmacy, they fell in love completely. On the way back, they were in a different state, talking and laughing all the way, and soon returned to the farm. Glenn gave the stuff to Lori first, and didn't ask much. Late at night, Lori went out alone, avoiding the RV and walking towards the distance until no one else was around. And then she started taking out the pregnancy test. Just as she expected, she was pregnant, but she couldn't be happy, and she didn't dare to tell Rick. Maybe she was worried that the baby would be a burden in the post-apocalyptic world, or perhaps she wasn't even sure if the baby was Rick's or Shane's. The next day, Rick has basically recovered his strength and again assigns everyone the task of finding Sophia. This time, Shane and Rick went out together to look for Sophia. Rick talks about interesting things that happened before the end of the world, but Shane is not happy, thinking that Rick has sent everyone he can to scour the woods to find a little girl everyone knows is dead. Doesn't Rick understand this? Everyone relies on him, and every decision he makes is extremely difficult. Shane angrily states that Sophia is only worth looking for when she's not dragging everyone down. Shane blamed Rick. If he hadn't done this, everyone would have been on their way to Fort Benning, Carl wouldn't have been shot because of this, and Otis wouldn't have paid the price with his life. Rick also came to a temper, saying that Sophia trusted him a lot at the time, but the results let her down. Rick believed she was still alive and would never give up looking for her. They disagreed and had to part ways. Daryl also secretly rode the farm horse to the creek. This time, he seemed to find something, and when he came to the water's edge and took a closer look, it was Sophia's toy. Daryl hurriedly shouted up, but no response, he could only continue to ride towards the front to explore. This was the first time in so many days he found a clue. While walking, Daryl carefully observed the surrounding and did not notice a poisonous snake on the ground in front of him. The horse was suddenly frightened, maniacally twisted his body, and threw Daryl down. Daryl tumbled down the slope into the creek. Under the heavy impact, he felt like his bones were falling apart, and his crossbow arrow pierced his abdomen. Blood stained the creek water. Daryl returned to the shore with his strong body, then tore his clothes and tightly strangled the wound to avoid losing too much blood. But at this time, there were some loud noises in the woods, probably zombies. Daryl subconsciously tried to get his weapon but found it was missing. He could only salvage it in the water. Next, he returned to the top of the hill with injuries. Each step will be involved in the wound, and he could only grit his teeth, and finally with a strong will to climb to a high place and then a few steps to reach the road, but here the soil is loose. Daryl again rolled down toward the bottom, this time, he passed out. It took him a long time to open his eyes, and he was met by his brother Dixon. Dixon was mocking the fact that he was dying, becoming a follower of that Rick for a little girl. This is a joke, one day they will abandon you mercilessly. Then Dixon kicked Daryl, urging him to get up. Daryl is now in a trance, he has realized that this brother is his hallucination, not his brother kicking him, but the zombie is biting his feet, he instantly sweated with fear, the zombie did not bite through his shoes, Daryl pushed the zombie down and smashed his head with a stick, but another zombie came not far away, he endured the pain and killed the zombie before he jumped on him, Daryl lay on the ground for a while, feeling he needed to pull himself together, survival in the wild is his strong point, first, he took off his clothes and strangled his waist, then dissected the squirrel he caught before and started eating it raw to replenish his strength, and finally cut off the zombie's ear to make a necklace, which was his trophy. And then went climbing again with great perseverance, and this time he managed to come up. Inside the farm, Herschel sees them busy in the kitchen and does not understand what they are doing in his heart. Maggie explains to him that Lori and Carol are cooking dinner for them tonight. Herschel tells his daughter they should draw a line in the sand with these people. Herschel then urges his daughter to stay away from Glenn and not to have anything to do with them. Outside the house, Dale just went to carry a bucket of water in time for Andrea to run to the car's roof. 
saying she didn't want to do laundry anymore and wanted to be part of the patrol with guns. Everyone on the team won't let her hold a gun, thinking she can't use it and that using it indiscriminately will attract zombies. And the more she does, the more she's eager to prove herself. She had just been on sentry duty for a while when she saw a zombie in the distance and shouted to the others. Andrea looked through the binoculars and saw that it was a zombie, and she picked up the sniper rifle to prove herself. The others told her not to shoot, as it would give Herschel a problem, and they rushed toward the zombies with their weapons. Andrea was still defiant and started aiming again. The sunset was blinding, but she was still confident she could hit it. And when Dale told her not to shoot, she told him to get out of the way. At the same time, Rick and several people also came to the zombie, which is not a zombie, but Daryl, several people are a little surprised. Injured he walked shakily, the corners of his mouth and blood, simply a zombie. Daryl was also angry at Rick and said this is the third time you have taken a gun to my head. As they heard him speak, a few people were relieved, but suddenly the shot rang out. Daryl fell to the ground, Andrea showed a happy expression, she shot, then her smile stopped, and the sound of gunfire drew the attention of Herschel, who himself did not like Rick and the others using guns. Fortunately, Andrea is a novice, the bullet grazed Daryl's scalp and flew past, so many difficulties he survived, but Andrea almost killed him. Andrea and Dale rushed over, they saw that Daryl was still alive. Andrea was relieved. Glenn also noticed that Daryl had a necklace made of ears hanging from his chest, and Rick pulled it off, which Herschel and the others didn't like. At this point, the man in the back shouted, this is Sophia's doll. After a while, Herschel helped Daryl to treat the wound. This incident makes him even more reluctant to live with Rick and the others. They are so reckless to survive until now. Andrea also blames herself for the incident and almost makes a big mistake. Dale has always cared for her, and now he's telling her not to think about it. They ate together for the first time during dinner, and the atmosphere was somewhat silent. Herschel didn't want to have much contact with them, and during dinner Maggie secretly passed a note to Glenn, asking him where to go on a date tonight. Glenn looked at Maggie and smiled happily, then immediately wrote down a line on the note. Maggie felt her father looking at her, put away her expression, and secretly took the note. Carol came to Daryl's room with the meal and kissed him on the cheek. Daryl was a little uncomfortable. Carol wanted to tell him that he had done more for Sophia recently than her father had done in his life. Daryl replied with embarrassment that Rick and Shane would have done the same. Carol went on to say that you and they are good people and thank you for everything you've done for my daughter. This was the first time Daryl had the satisfaction of helping others, which was completely different from the life he had lived with his brother. When everyone finished eating, Maggie finally opened the note, which said they agreed to meet at the hayloft tonight. At this time, Glenn had already hugged a blanket and ran to the door of the hayloft, but he did not expect that the hayloft was locked. He could only use the ladder to climb in. Maggie also came out at this time, looking a bit panicked. Glenn just came to the second floor, with a flashlight ready to find a suitable place. But he gradually smelled a rotten smell inside. He shone his flashlight down and saw dozens of zombies. His girlfriend's farm had dozens of zombies in captivity, and he was so scared that he wanted to run away. But then Maggie also found the place. You are supposed to see this. The next day, Glenn still has palpitations. From time to time, he will observe the hay house. He always feels that zombies will break out of the door. But Maggie has repeatedly instructed not to tell Rick and the others about this because the people on the farm think that the people inside are not zombies but sick people and will send people to feed them daily. Glenn is now very difficult. On the one hand, his girlfriend asked him to keep it a secret. And on the other hand, these zombies are very unsafe to be around. Finally, indecisive, he decided to tell the team of Elders Dale. For the time being, this old man sees everything very thoroughly. The old-fashioned Dale was a bit surprised to hear that, and find Herschel, claiming that he had heard zombies outside the hayloft. Herschel is a little upset. He doesn't want people calling his family zombies, despite Dale's description of how dangerous the zombies were in the outside world. Herschel insisted that they merely had a mental illness and that his wife and son were inside the hayloft. Dale is silent, knowing he can't change Herschel's opinion, and suggests he can talk to Rick about it. But Herschel stubbornly said that the hayloft was safe now and told Dale not to tell anyone about it. Dale finally had no choice but to return. Next he found Lori, the kindly old man who said in a soothing way that he knew she was pregnant. Lori also said bluntly that only Glenn knew about it, and she hadn't decided to tell Rick yet. To her surprise, Dale asked directly if it was because of Shane. Lori was shocked. Was it so obvious that she and Shane had been involved in something before? 
Dale hastened to say that no one else knew. He was just a little suspicious because he had experienced more things. Lori had to explain that she used to think Rick was dead before she accepted Shane. She hesitated to have her because she didn't want the child to be born without good memories and live in a precarious post-apocalyptic world. Dale advised Lori not to think that way. But Lori asked, will she be able to grow up and live a happy life? Dale couldn't speak for a moment. He wanted to talk the young man into doing the right thing, but he was powerless. Glenn looks at Lori as she walks toward him and thinks she's blaming him for telling Dale the secret. But Lori says it's okay and that she shouldn't make it hard for Glenn to keep his secret. Lori wants him to help him go out and find some medicine. Glenn is kind-hearted and agrees immediately. Soon Glenn starts heading to town, but he calls on Maggie anyway. But Maggie is not in a good mood because Glenn promised to keep the herb house a secret but told someone else. And again she states that those are not zombies, but sick family members. They soon arrived at the pharmacy again. Maggie looked at the list of drugs, which turned out to be abortifacients, and then unhappily headed towards the inside cabinets. Just as she looked for them, a zombie across the counter grabbed her hand. Maggie had never had such an experience before and was so scared that she screamed. Glenn heard the scream and immediately rushed up and snapped the zombie's neck. Glenn nervously checked to see if she was bitten and then held her tightly. Just at this time, the zombie actually stood up again. Glenn grabbed a dagger and chopped it directly into his head. The zombie fell. Maggie also had a new understanding of zombies at this time. The neck is broken if this thing is human. How can it still stand up? When they returned to the farm, Maggie furiously took the medicine and found Lori, and then threw it on the ground. Glenn came to the tent and said to Lori that they met a zombie when they were looking for medicine and almost died. That's why Maggie was a little excited. Lori was also guilty and kept apologizing. Glenn then took out another medicine for Lori, which she opened and saw was a prenatal vitamin. Glenn still hoped that Lori would think about it and that she should not make her own decision about whether to have the baby. After Glenn left, Lori chose to take the abortion pill, but she immediately regretted it and ended up spitting it out again. She struggled with whether it was the right thing to do. A few minutes later, Rick arrives at the tent, sees the pills on the table, knows his wife is pregnant, and rushes to find Lori. Rick had an endless amount of anger in his heart, not because his wife didn't want the baby but because she kept this from him. Lori, however, tells Rick that she has already spit out the medicine. Do you really want the child to be born in such a world? A heated argument breaks out, and Lori's emotions crumble. Rick's heart softened, and he told Lori they could protect the child and not deny her a chance to live. Finally, Rick looked at Lori with sincerity and asked her if there was anything else she was hiding from him. Lori was silent for two seconds and told him about herself and Shane. Rick nodded. He was not a fool. Maybe he had known before. He didn't accuse Lori or ask who the baby belonged to but assumed that Lori thought he was dead at the time. Will the relationship between them as a couple deteriorate as a result? 